Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to refurbish a fairly new Case Stockman knife. Now this knife is probably, if I had to guess, it's in the neighborhood of uh, around eight to 10 years old. It might be actually up to 20 years old. I know the number, I think it was 58185 was the number on the, um, on the box I saw the other day. But that's neither here nor there. Um, it's a little small knife, not much bigger than my index finger. Hope you can see that. Uh, I'm gonna put some uh, higher quality photos up on this video so you can actually see the knife. Now, this knife, like I said, it's almost fairly, fair. it's very close to new, okay? But, and I can't tell you when it happened, at some point in time, I dropped this knife or something got dropped on it and the handle was broken. Perhaps you can see it there. Once again, I'll be putting some um, better photos up on this video so you can take a look at what's going on here. Now, ultimately, this is not the knife that I'm interested in. This is for me a knife it was given to me by my mother very much appreciated and somehow it got broke obviously but the knife that I'm really interested in working with is this knife right here once again a stockman little nicer knife in my opinion and I've purchased this brand new and I've had it engraved with what I want on it. And I'm going to be taking this knife, taking the handles off of it. Yes, I know, sacrilege to some of you folks. But I'm going to be taking the ha handles off of it. And I'm going to be replacing the handles with this mammoth bark. Okay? I really like this piece and we'll see how it looks on the knife ultimately but you're looking at a total 100% amateur who basically doesn't know what he's doing he's going on YouTube videos searching online etc for how to do this job and rather than start on the ultimate knife that he wants to work on you're looking at a guy that has gone and picked out the drawer this knife that's already broken and has limited value okay and we're gonna work on this one first see if we can get it to work see what techniques we need to use and apply those now once again let me reiterate I'm 100% amateur on this. I don't know what I'm doing. So, if you feel the need to criticize me, feel free. But I'd appreciate it if you make it constructive. If you don't like the way I'm doing something, offer an alter alternative, okay? It'd be great because this is a learning experience for me and the best teachers give you alternatives on how to do things okay so that's your job here if you're going to critique me okay so and I will not be offended if you critique me that's fine now first things we're going to do is we're going to look at this little blue knife here just in the context of how it was constructed okay and on the brass there that's now exposed, I'm not feeling any glue at all, okay? Now, that was one of my questions going into this project. Were the handles glued on, do, does Case ha glue the handles on their knives, yes or no? I can't say for certain via just this one knife, whether they do or do not. But I do not feel any residue of any glue where this handle has been broken off. So that, 
once I once I take the other half of the handle, I, I I've lost the piece here. Okay, uh, I have no idea where it is. It could be in the drawer somewhere. It could be in the backyard somewhere. It's gone. So I can't look at the piece that's been broken off, see if it has any glue on it. That just didn't quite make its way onto this brass right here. What I think is brass. Once again, I'm an amateur. So if it's not brass, correct me, okay? No problem. But it looks like brass, much like the pins there are. Okay, so one of our first jobs is going to be taking off the handles on both sides and determining if there's glue there or not. If there's glue there or not, if there's glue there, then I need to, on the actual target knife, develop some technique for getting the handle off without badly marring the rest of the finish of the knife. Okay, that's going to be the goal. Assuming there's glue on there. But based upon this little blue blue knife here, it doesn't look like there's handles. Okay? I mean, excuse me, glue. So, one thing I noticed about this little blue knife is I, I looked at the box and it said it was bone handles. And then I look at the little blue knife, and I understand this is a fairly cheap knife, okay? It was not... I don't want to say cheap. Cheap cheap makes it sound cheap, okay? An inexpensive knife. So, when I look at the... the ostensibly was labeled as bone, I see that it looks like it was a... a whitish bone, and then some sort of stain put on the bone. Just basically looking at the knife. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get you some photographs and show you what it looks like, okay? And I suppose that's how they do all their knives. I, I don't know. Um, once You know, um, anything that has an obvious unnatural coloring such as this blue right here. I would assume that's how Case uh, creates a blue knife. I don't think there's any animals out there that have blue bone, do they? I hear a blue bloods. That's a TV show, isn't it? Something along those lines. Anyway, bad joke. So, so we're going to be looking at this once again for does it have glue? And we're going to be looking at the pins in it and so on and so forth, how to do those, if we can even do those, duplicate that, or are we going to be forced to merely take the mammoth bark, create a handle for it, and glue it on there without the two pins on the ends? Okay, now we're gonna have to get the center one here, but what about the ends, okay? And that was another one of my questions. And I'll just cover it right now. This gave this broken knife gave me the opportunity. I have been wondering because I couldn't I couldn't easily see it. I suppose if I got a better light and maybe got my really good camera out and took a photograph, I could have seen it. But the pin that's sticking out right here that held this handle on. It certainly does not go all the way through the knife over to the, from here, this side, all the way to the other side. It does not. It only goes into, into the knife, into the side here, goes through it, and then on the other side, the pin is flattened. Okay? So... I can't just take a pair of pliers and pull on that pin without slightly or even badly damaging this knife right here, okay? 
right here. So I can't pull on that, I can't take a pair of needle nose pliers and pull on that pin and just pull it out. Because if I do, the hole that it's in is going to become larger to some degree, or it's going to be deformed. Because in this particular case, in th with this knife, the pin, the head has been tapped down, flattened on both ends. Okay, there was no glue applied to this pin that I can detect. So that's good information for me because what I want to do is just take a pair of snips and just snip that pin off. Now, the question is for me, once again, rank amateur, just starting this project, can I find a piece of brass wire, a pin, this small? Because this is, I would say that's 1 16th of an inch. I'll have to measure it, have to get my caliper out and measure it. But I would say it's right around the neighborhood of 1 16th of an inch. It's not an eighth, okay? And that'll come up later in the process. But we're going to be needing to search for some materials here first, okay? And one of the materials I'm going to need to finish this particular knife off and the ultimate target knife is going to be some pin material, which I don't own yet. Okay, but it should be fairly, fairly simple to get my hands on. Just, I got to know the right size to purchase. Okay. Now, one of the problems we're going to have here is if we're going to, if we're going to redo this knife and have a pin in it, how are we going to get the backside beaten down and flattened? Okay, so I have an idea on how to do that. I suspect how Case probably did it in the first place. They probably did it before they even assembled the knife. Okay. I'm not going to tear the knife all the way down. I have no desire to do, to take it down to all of its individual pieces. So my goal is going to be get a pin in there that has a flattened end on it, insert it from the interior there, bring it through the hole that exists, then put my mammoth bark on top through, you know, obviously having drilled a proper hole in it in the proper spot, bring that pin through my mammoth bark. And then I'm going to need to construct a piece of metal that will go inside this knife that will be a backstop on that pin. Make sense? So that when I'm on the mammoth side, on the outside of the knife, tapping down and flattening that pin to hold the mammoth bark on, the backside doesn't move. Now I'm sure Case has in their position a lot of metal pieces that properly fit in here. I'm going to have to construct one. I don't have nothing like that. And it's going to have to be something solid. It's going to, have to be something steel and flat. Now it doesn't need to be as wide as the as wide as the knife or anything like that. It can be say a half inch wide, but it needs to be the thickness of the interior of this knife because there can't be much of any gap at all in there. Now, one thing I don't know is this hole on the interior of this of this is it is it you know a little kind of little cup in there that holds the pin or is that pin up against a flat surface the head of that pin that I do not know now this little pr piece of brass right here whatever its name is okay once again my my apologies whatever whatever this piece of brass is it's pretty thin so 
to create a little little hole there for the pinhead might be a little difficult. So we're going to get my big camera out. I got all the camera equipment to do this with, okay? So we're going to get some good photos out of this. We're going to be able to show you what's going on, okay? I'm going to get my big camera out, and I'll illuminate it really good, and hopefully we'll be able to go in there and take, take a look-see and see what's going on inside of this knife. And then we'll have an idea of what we're up against, okay? But before I take the pin out, I'm going to go ahead and construct that backstop that I'm going to need so that it properly fits given the conditions that Case has set up in this particular knife. Okay? Hope that makes sense. You'll see what I'm doing eventually here. This is going to be a long video. I don't know if it's going to be multiple parts or just one big, long, hour and a half video. Who knows? I'm bad about talking. You can already see that. Let me see how long this video has been going. This video has been going for 16 minutes, and I'm not done one thing to this knife yet. I've just talked about some of the things that's going to have to happen to make this knife eventually have this bark in it or bark attached to it. Okay, so stick with me. If I if it's a multi-part video, I'll I'll put links so you can get to the next video in the descriptions, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, so you can find it. Or like I said, I may make it one big long video, or I may do both. Okay, thanks for your time, and when I get something else for you to see, I'll bring it up. Okay, thanks.